Greetings, dear ones. It is Sunday, the 13th of December. We are nearly halfway through December, and it's less than two weeks until Christmas. My, what a time it is, is it not? I have been doing every day from the 1st of December through the 1st of January a, s a small post on my website each day and it goes out to social media and kind of all over called a tiny bit of Christmas cheer and I I will have a link to those and everything else as always below the little post below this video that you'll be seeing uh, I did, and I had no intention of missing a single day, but yesterday I did. I, I wrote something saying, I wrote a little short post on my, on my blog and to my mailing list and to Patreon. Those are the people that get everything. I did not put it out on social media because all it said was, it's a hard day. I'm really not up to doing a post today. And I didn't much go into it. It was a busy day yesterday because as I have shared here before, my dear Eleanor, who is my daughter's best friend and a wonderful teacher, but she has been coming the last three years or so to help me a couple of times a month just for like three hours and or so in the afternoon to do some of the heavier chores here at the house. I am currently laid up, hence the pillow and the recliner chair, as I always have tried to tell people that I don't always sit around propped up like this. Uh, I fell the end of October and sprained my foot and ankle and tore ligaments and I I'm starting to get around a little easier but I'm still in pain the nurse practitioner says three to six months. I'm hoping we're on the shorter end of that. But so, but Eleanor, uh, I'm, I'm disabled anyway. I have wonky feet. And Eleanor does just marvelous things yesterday, and as she did for me yesterday. But she usually comes a couple times a month to do heavier household things like mopping the floors, cleaning the bathrooms, and whatever I have on my little Eleanor list. And yesterday she came as she has, since I hurt my foot, an extra time each month just to help me get the garden put to bed for the year. I have a rather large cottage garden all around the front of my house. And it required a lot of work to get it taken care of in the fall and preparing for winter. So the last of that needed to be done. And it's here in on the coast of North Carolina, we have very temperate weather. It's been in the 70s during the day. We did have it drop and had a frost a week or so ago, which killed the annuals, which meant all the annuals <laughs> in the ground. And I have lots of pots on my deck that goes right out my studio. And they were looking pretty awful. Uh, so she came and I hobbled out to the deck and sat in my chair, <laughs> kind of directed her what needed to be done. All of the pots of annuals needed to be dumped. And um, I have a big, one of those uh, big round collapsible like things, like, you know, I could f put my arms around it, that you can gather yard waste in. And she had that filled with emptying pots and old soil and dead plants and whatever to go put on the compost pile. And there were a couple of other chores and since I can't do even things I normally would have because of my foot. So all of that she did yesterday. But the most wonderful thing that she did was just being here. And what I, the name of the post that I wrote today takes, takes its inspiration from a Dr. Seuss quote. This is the second time doing these posts that I've used a quote from Dr. Seuss. The Grinch who stole Christmas kind of like says it all. Uh, but he says, Christmas will always be 
as long as we stand heart to heart and hand to hand. And the name of the post was hold on to one another. During these times, the hardest thing of all is that we can't hold on physically to one another as we normally would. Not being able to hug is one of the hardest things about COVID to me. But Eleanor came and when she got done and it was like 70-ish, the weather was beautiful, we sat outside, she made us up little plates of, I'm on the ketogenic diet, so I have certain things I can have and not have, but she made us up a beautiful plate of cheese and I have some uh, crackers that are fine for keto, they're almond flour crackers, I get them on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And she made us up some plates of cheese and crackers and poured us a little wine. It was a special treat. It was our uh, just sort of a holiday celebration, a celebration of being together. For the first few months of COVID, she didn't come at all. And she's, of course, and she's only started to come the last few months, three months or so, of course, wearing a mask. She comes in wearing her mask. We keep our social distance. But what she does here for me is like, I mean, she keeps the wheels going here. She really, really helps me keep things going. And it gave, so let me backtrack a little bit. And I'm talking in a circular fashion, as I do, and I will apologize. But the reason that I, I couldn't write a post yesterday for, for the Christmas post was because of some news that I've gotten the t the day before. Now, we all, I mean, we all know that COVID's here. You can't miss that. It's been most of this year. And we hear it on the, I don't have regular TV. I haven't had cable in years, but you know, some people watch the news, you see stuff online, maybe the newspaper. We've all been hearing that COVID is getting worse again. It's taking another swing toward the worst side of things. And there are lockdowns in a lot of places and people are getting very ill or dying. And you hear this. And it's, it's not that you at all become immune to it. Most of us are frightened by it and upset by it and worried and we do everything that we possibly can. I am agoraphobic. I don't leave my house. I left very rarely before COVID. Over the summer, I did the little thing which I talked about in these earlier videos. Um, my daughter had been getting my groceries for me in the first months of COVID. And then over the summer, I tried uh, the curbside grocery pickup because there's a little grocery store literally two minutes from my house where I could order and pay online, drive two minutes over there, not have to get out of my car. And the grocery person came wearing a mask just to the back end of my car, put the groceries in and was gone. It was, I was there and back in 15 minutes with my groceries. So I was doing that every couple of weeks or so until October when I took the fall and badly hurt my foot. And so I haven't been driving. So there was just a very little window there in the summer where every couple of weeks I did do the curbside pickup. Other than that, and I have not left my house, gotten out of my car and gone in anywhere since March 1st, period, at all. I have two masks. When I drove over to get my groceries, I, I put the mask on even though the person wasn't even coming up to my window to make contact. But just, just to be safe, I firmly believe in masks. But so we hear of COVID and I've talked a lot about how we can't get together for the holidays as we normally would with our family, friends, you know, we've all had to make alternative ideas for celebrations on Zoom or whatever. So COVID is the hot topic of conversation, but it's not until something happens to someone 
you know. And for me, this wasn't a direct hit meaning in my family. Our, but a woman that I respect and admire and care for a great deal wrote a post last week that both of her in-laws were in the hospital with COVID on ventilators. They'd been her in-laws for 34 years. She loved them dearly. Of course, the whole family was upset and worried and she asked for prayers and good thoughts and I prayed like mad that things would turn around and all would be well. On Friday, she wrote a follow-up post saying that they had both passed away. And that was horrible news, but the way she wrote about it broke my heart because what she said was that in the hospital, they moved their beds side by side and they were holding hands together when they passed away. I have chills all over and tears in my eyes right now. I was devastated for them. And of course I wrote back that I would continue to hold them in my heart and prayers that I was so terribly sorry, the things that you do. But it, it really hit me. It, it's like one of those things, yes, you hear about COVID, yes, you hear about the cases, you read it in the paper, you hear it on the news, or people are talking about it, you're wearing the masks, you're doing the protocols, I mean, all of that. But when it's someone you know, or know of more directly like this, it becomes very real in a way that it hadn't before. I know many of you, oh, <laughs> yes. Molly wants to be in this video. <laughs> she has decided, my, this is my little one-eyed wonder for those of you who don't know her. I adopted Molly, it'll be two years ago in January. She's a little Chihuahua Corgi mix. Yes, I know. They, they call them chigis. I did not even know that was a thing, the Chihuahua Corgi. So we have company <laughs> during this video. She is always tucked in this chair with me. She is always right with me. So she will be sharing airtime. <laughs> but that, that news hit me so hard. Thank God Eleanor was here yesterday because I was so upset. Because when you, when you have that shock of reality, when it hits someone you know or know of in a closer sense, it's like a game changer. Yes, there's COVID, but now there's COVID in all caps. And I know some of you who are watching this have had COVID and thank God one of my dearest friends and her family all got COVID and they all came through it. Some people have it or are struggling, hoping not to get it because they have to go to work and they're wearing the mask and they're doing all of that, but they have potentially been exposed and had to be tested maybe multiple times. And now it's the holidays and it's all, it all seems harder now because gathering at Christmas is, or whatever holiday you may celebrate, is such a deep seated tradition for all of us. And I feel like I'm talking all over the place and I am and I, I'm sorry. I, I really, really do apologize. This has really shaken me up. And I guess what I want to say is to, even within the constraints 
that we have. And even knowing that it is extremely important to take the protocols seriously it was very disturbing to hear in the face of everyone being told not to travel for Thanksgiving, to be with family and friends. And you, of course, understand people wanting to do that. People traveled in record numbers, even in the face of COVID. That's the way it spreads. That's the way whole families get COVID. Please be careful. It's so important, though, in the face of all of that, that we do make an effort to gather in whatever way we can. I've already talked about Zoom a lot and how my family and I meet on Zoom. And uh, how many people, I mean, Zoom has maybe single-handedly been responsible for helping us not lose our minds and having some connection to our families during, during this whole COVID crisis. But there are, there are ways that we can draw close to one another using Zoom, using the phone, writing one another online. If you have someone that can, you can meet with in person outdoors or you know being socially distant and wearing masks oh dear yes your your nose is going to take up the whole screen Molly <laughs> um, if you can do anything I think it's really important as Dr. Seuss said as long as we stand heart to heart and hand to hand and in the face of COVID dang if that ain't hard but we have to. Let me tell you something that my, my eldest daughter, Jenny, who lives in Chicago with her family, she has my two little grandsons that are five and eight years old. She did something yesterday that I think was such a fun idea, such a marvelous way of making the best of a COVID Christmas she asked if she could use my Zoom. I've told my kids, you know, I pay for Zoom so our family can get together. $15 a month is worth it. You can get a free Zoom account, but it's really limited. Like maybe you can talk to, I don't know if you can only talk to one other person, but you can only talk for like 45 minutes or, you know, and, and that's plenty to keep in touch. But we've had big family gatherings and we've gone over the time and I meet monthly with my girls, my daughters and my daughter-in-law. So I pay the $15 to get that uh, unlimited time. So Jen asked if she could use it. She had a very special thing uh, planned. <laughs> uh, the dog and me, well. Uh, she is big every year on baking Christmas cookies all different kinds of Christmas cookies. And she has had get togethers with her friends where they all made cookies together. This year, they did it on Zoom. Jenny used my Zoom. They set it all up. Their kids are friends. The families got to see one another and bake cookies at the same time from their own houses, from in their own kitchens. And <laughs> you want to get on the other side? Okay. Oh, Lord have mercy. Well, this is a crazy video. Um, now we <laughs> have a tail in the picture. Uh, I'm really sorry about this. It's just a mess. I'm just a mess. It's the middle of December <laughs> with Christmas almost here and crazy things happening and... Um, I wouldn't miss doing a video, but my brains are so scattered that I uh, maybe shouldn't have. But I'm here with you. You know, I think that's the thing. I did a post this last week. If you want to see the, the posts that you may have missed, if you, if you go to the landing page on my website, mytreeleebelluel.com, my, my blog is 
is the landing page on the website. And you will always see the current blog post, like the one I just put up a short time ago today. You will always see that on the front page of the website. If you read down to the bottom of that post, there's a little link that says next. You click on that to go to the one before, you click on next again at the bottom of that one to go to the one before, and so on. There's also a drop down menu in the column on the right hand side that is an archive for all the blog posts. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of them. My blog goes back to 2007. It's 14 years old. So you can look up a topic there, but you can find the older blog posts. One day last week, I, I did a little Christmas post that day about the fact that, that we're not alone. And it, it, it is the post that has gotten the most attention. It has been shared all over social media. A lot of people wrote to me privately. People have told me that they've shared it on their own Facebook pages because they, they said so many people through the holidays feel so alone and they loved the post. I tell you that because if you are alone, it may bring you comfort. If you know someone that is alone, it may bring them comfort. So it is there. I will put a link to that particular post in addition to today's post just below this video so you'll be able to find it easier. Uh, <laughs> I'm like holding the dog with one hand so she doesn't back her fanny up right into the middle of the video. <laughs> um, things that have saved me through the holidays. Even though I have been sad, even in the face of bad news, even in the worries about COVID for myself, my family, my friends, I have tried my level best to make it a festive, joyful time right here in Dragonfly Cottage in my little home, even though I rarely see anybody in person. My daughter Rachel comes once a week Eleanor comes every couple of weeks. That's pretty much it. I, I feel like I see more people because I'm online all the time. And I am with my Patreon people, my patrons, every day. Uh, Saturday's my day off, but I usually post something there anyway. Sunday I'm here with you all, and I do a Sunday... Uh, usually do a big Sunday blog post once a week. Now through, th through the 1st of January, I'm doing a post every day, just a special thing for the holidays. So there's always something new there every day, currently. But Monday through Friday are very busy active days in Patreon where I provide a lot of content. And I have the... Uh, what used to be called Morning Coffee with Maitri, which I've been doing since Patreon started September the 1st. I am still doing them, but I have renamed them, which was the suggestion of one of my lovely patrons. I have renamed them Reading and Reflecting with Maitri. And I do it five mornings a week for patrons, but I share this video on Mondays publicly for free. So if you come here to this channel to see the Sunday videos, you will also find them, the Monday uh, reading and reflecting video here publicly that you can watch as well. The name change is because I started, when I started doing those videos, just kind of, you know, getting up with my coffee and randomly talking about like the day and the weather and what's going on in the garden and with the animals and my writing and of course what's going on with the art. May, uh, Maisie's World is my Patreon <laughs> and uh, I, I have a character 
who is my alter ego, who has a little dog named Daisy, who is Molly's alter ego. And I have been drawing and painting them and a whole host of other little animals and creatures and characters in with them uh, for the last almost two years. So Patreon was set up. Uh, it is a place where patrons, as in the days of old, where people like Mozart had patrons that supported them so they could do their work. Patreon has been going about five years now and all kinds of artists, musicians, writers, whatever, open up a Patreon page and people who enjoy their work and want to help support them do their work and get it out in the world can become a patron and pay a monthly pledge there's no commitment. You can come and go anytime you want. It's you, For as little as $5 a month, you get a ton of content. Uh, and these videos, I do five mornings a week. And what the videos have evolved to is instead of me just sort of chatting, I'm reading. The videos are 20 to 30 minutes long. I start with a little opening most of the video I'm reading our current book. I just finished several days ago finishing reading Sue Bender's Everyday Sacred, which is one of my all-time favorite books. Right now I am reading May Sarton's Plant Dreaming Deep, which is the memoir she wrote that then kicked off a lifetime of journals that made her very famous. She was a poet, a novelist, and in the last decades of her life, she wrote journals, Journal of a Solitude, The House by the Sea, After the Stroke, many, many. I had read and reread and taught May's books in my writing classes. Uh, I did a very special, deep, creative, healing journal writing class for just about 40 years. And I had so loved her books. And by a bit of serendipity and a miraculous set of circumstances, in the last years of her life, I got to know May and we became very dear friends. And I spoke to her for the last time three weeks before she passed away. Her books are not only the most important books in my life, they have shaped me as a woman, as a writer, as a woman living alone, a life of solitude and virtual silence to do my work, my writing and my art. These are very deep, very special books. And I, I read every morning. So, and then I, I will have a few comments after I read. And the people who like to watch videos are really loving them and loving this book and loved the book before. So reading in the morning is a place where we can gather and share something special. And if you like that sort of thing, you can check out my Patreon uh, link below. I'd love to have you. It is a women only community. All my other work, these videos, my blog, my website, social media, everything else is for men and women, for everybody. The Patreon community is a private, closed women's community. And it is not just for supporting my work and helping me get my work out into the world. It supports me doing these videos and it's helping me do the art uh, and create Maisie's book, Maisie's World book. So in return for that, I create a lot of content at three different levels for as little as five dollars a month. You can get you can get it all. Uh, all the vid I mean not you can get all the videos and a lot of other content. So anyway, I got started on that. Not that I'm trying to yammer on always about Patreon, but I'm so I'm so excited about it. It's given me a place, unlike anything I've known in my 66 years, to bring the work of a lifetime together. Writing, art, 
teaching, journaling, videos, photographs, notes from me, all kinds of things. It's given me a place to bring it all together. And if you are a woman and you are feeling alone, please check it out because I'd love to be able to support you. Forming a community there is one of the most important things about Patreon. And for all of you, these videos on Sundays and the Monday Reading and Reflecting with My Tree video will be up tomorrow here for you to watch. So anyway, be safe in these COVID days. Do your best to connect with other people in ways that are safe and possible. Take advantage of every single opportunity and possibility that is there from Zoom to the telephone, to emails, to real letters, sending gifts in the mail, real packages to open, bake cookies together with your friends on Zoom like my daughter did. I just can't get over that. I think that's fabulous. And wear your masks and be socially distant. And remember that you're not just doing it for yourself, you're doing it for the world around you, especially the elderly people and the people most at risk. Take care of yourself. Take care of those you love and hold hearts and hands around the world. Even if it's in a virtual sense, we can feel it. I am sending my love little Molly who's finally settled down is sending hers and I'll see you next Sunday and I'll see you tomorrow morning with reading and reflecting with Maitri the public edition take care dear ones and I'm sorry for the chaotic video with with dogs and scattered thoughts and everything all around and in between take care <laughs>